joined now by Xavier O'Halloran, Director at Super Consumers Australia. Xavier, this move to name and shame underperforming super funds through your super, how much will that help consumers? Yeah, I think it's going to help a lot. Um, unfortunately, consumers are completely left in the dark at the moment around their funds performance. We've heard of people, you know, getting complicated yearly um, documents from their funds, updating them on performance and having no real idea whether that stacks up well against the rest of the market. So this will be a real game changer in driving competition, letting people know that there may be better options out there for them. And will it also simplify and streamline processes for people when they change jobs? Yeah, it really will. At the moment, people get a new account every time they change jobs unless they take active steps to stop that from happening. And that's led to millions and millions of duplicate accounts being created out there. People are paying multiple fees, multiple insurance, in some cases, insurance they can't even claim on. Um, and that has been a huge drain on the system. The estimate's something like $50,000 on average for a person out of their retirement savings. So this new process of um, people taking their account with them as they change jobs is going to streamline all of that. We won't see creation of any new accounts. Um, it will be important though that um, consumers do continue to check if they have any existing duplicate accounts out there. Uh, but again, the process has been made easier through the ATO to consolidate those, um, which will really help consumers take control of their superannuation. Should the government have gone further though, for example, to make a firm commitment to increasing the superannuation guarantee? Look, I think the jury's still out on the superannuation guarantee. The retirement income um, review will be really important in guiding decision-making there. The starting point always has to be, how do we get to adequacy for people in retirement? Um, the measures announced in the budget will really assist with that. Um, some of the Productivity Commission estimates for people, say, in a really poor performing fund currently, across a lifetime, we're talking about half a million dollars worth of um, lost savings due to underperformance. So those types of things will actually really drive up um, people's retirement balances without the need for a superannuation guarantee. So I think it's important that these kind of measures get passed first and then we reassess, well, are we reaching adequacy? Do we still need to go ahead with superannuation guarantee? And if that's the case, then that's the right time for the government to consider it. What about things like changes to the system for caps on contributions? I know there's been discussion about making it a lifetime cap for extra contributions rather than yearly. Yeah, again, the retirement income review has got a lot of work to do here and we really are keen to see what's in that report because there are serious fairness issues in the system where, um, you know, wealthier people essentially have been able to save far more and have benefited far more from the system and benefited in terms of tax um, cuts far more than others. And so there really needs to be a realignment about what this system is set up to do. And I think, it, like I said before, it should be about making sure people have adequate retirements, not that they can accumulate vast sums of wealth to then pass on to uh, future generations. Okay, Xavier, thanks very much for your time. No worries. Thank you.